Hi, y'all. This is um, Melissa Ushaka from the plan stage. And there's been some confusion about the recent feature that we have enabled on our internal groups called tasks. Uh, so I thought I'd record a quick video just to walk you through the concept of tasks and how customers will use it and how we can use it at GitLab in the future. So one of the goals that the plan stage has is to support industry standard agile frameworks. Um, so Scrum and Kanbans are ones that I'm sure you've heard of. They're the most common ones for team level planning. Uh, and then there's SAFE, and that one has become the most popular um, planning, agile planning framework uh, for anything above the team level, so for portfolio planning. So in order to explain tasks, I actually have to explain stories. <laughs> so let's start there. Um, so a story is a desired piece of functionality from a user's perspective. Um, so in stories, the most important thing is clearly laying out what the problem is and what you're solving. Um, so when that is complete, that's when teams jump in and to define how something needs to be implemented. Uh, and that's when tasks come into the picture. Uh, engineering teams break down that story into the discrete implementation steps, uh, and this helps them get a better picture of complexity and size, dependencies. It leads to better estimations, which is why some teams do this. Um, but that's one thing that's important to note in that all in all of these agile frameworks, tasking is considered an optional activity. Uh, so you'll find like out in the industry, some teams do it, some teams don't. Uh, it just really depends on their preference. Uh, but for some teams, this is a really important part of their process. So that's why as GitLab, we want to be able to represent it. Um, so just very quickly, I'm going to show you um, some of the content type of content that you'll find. And I'll put these links in chat. But you see um, Mountain Code Software is a really great place uh, for Agile reference things. Here, they talk about the difference between a story and a task. Uh, I'll link, link that in case that's not clear. Uh, but you see there's a whole <laughs> lot of content and opinions about how tasking should work. Um, but this is more, uh, so Mountain Goat software is more for the, I'll call it vanilla um, team planning, Scrum and Kanban stuff. Uh, SAFE is the scaled agile framework, definitely is more opinionated about how they do things and they uh, include guidance and tasking stories as part of their broader iteration planning workflow. And they do say here that this is something that's optional for teams. So it's not required to be considered um, that you're doing safe. So then now that we've talked about general concepts, let me talk about what this looks like in GitLab the product. So for teams that task stories, there's a couple of different ways to achieve them in GitLab, but none of them are really ideal. So the first one is that you can use epics as stories and issues as tasks. The second is that you can use issues as stories and checklists as tasks. And the third is that you can just have an, an issue that's a story and then in a comment lay out all the tasks. And then of course, as the team works, there'll be MRs and those are linked to issues. So none of these options are ideal um, and I'll walk through why. So using epics as stories is problematic because then you're forcing somebody to create a group and a project just to do basic uh, iteration planning. Uh, and you're forcing jumping between group and project to get the why behind work. And I'll also add that epics out in the market have a completely different definition. Epics are supposed to be uh, strategic, higher level planning objects. Uh, and stories are supposed to be stories. So from that perspective, it's also um, a little bit odd. But this is uh, advantageous because you are able to track each individual item that you are working on to complete a uh, deliverable. And it does give you that fidelity in your planning. So that's really nice. Using checklists is not ideal because you don't get that same degree of fidelity. For example, you can't assign a checklist item to someone uh, we follow a pattern when you put a name next to uh, a checklist, but it's really not the same uh, when it comes to doing things like analytics, um, like measuring velocity. You can't really get any of that from a checklist. And the third approach that I described is somebody putting a comment and laying out the task. This is good for lightweight planning, but again, you lose that fine-grained um, audit trail and reportability on it. 
So I'll jump quickly and show you how we do this on the plan team. And this is going to be a little bit meta because the issue that I'm going to show you is about tasks. Um, but we use a combination of methods one and three. Um, and let me show you that. Uh, so you can see here, this issue is actually, there's a lot of discussion, right? So I was scrolling. But this issue is actually a story, right? So we talk about what the problem is. We have a proposal and designs. And then we've been having a long discussion about how to implement this. We finally have arrived at the steps to implement with weights, if it's front end or back end. And typically, what we do now is that we promote this issue to an epic. And then the engineering teams create issues for each of these things. There's a couple of things that are um, not great about that. Is one is we actually have to explicitly go promote something. And then um, sometimes that can be confusing just because of how promoting issues work. And then one other thing that's a gap is that then design management is not available in Epic. So then all our designs are here. Um, so it's definitely a little bit clunky. Um, so not ideal. My preference would be that once we've um, laid this out, we can just quickly create things underneath. So that brings me to what we have with tasks. <laughs> nice segue. Uh, so essentially, now that we're going to have tasks as first level items, what we could do is take this issue and just create items underneath. Uh, so the tasks are going to be items that are um, you're able to assign, you're able to estimate. Uh, in the future, and you're able to see on boards. So that's not in this initial iteration. As you can see in this initial iteration, we're just working on getting um, all the foundations right to be able to actually create an item called a task. Um, but once we have those items that I described, we can move to a model in our customer scan where issues are stories and tasks are tasks, the implementation steps uh, to complete that. Uh, and then also we can uh, actually use epics as those higher level strategic goals that I was describing, which matches the definition out in the industry for what an epic is. Um, so in doing this, we'll present a more familiar working model for people, um, because uh, one thing that I'll add here is that our competitors like Jira and digital AI, this is what their data model looks like, where they have uh, an issue or a story, and then underneath a task above that, um, something called the feature epic, um, different nomenclature like that. So it will be something that's more familiar to customers and also uh, cleaner. Uh, I described there's now three ways of doing um, tasking. We can move to have one way of doing tasking, um, which is through an object called tasks. Uh, so hopefully this clears things up about why we're doing this and how we intend people to use it. But if you have any other questions, you can reach out, post in the hashtag S underscore plan channel and leave any questions. Thank you.